So I see you as a little bit more like cautious, a little bit more methodical when it comes to how you communicate with this person, what you want to say to this person and the information that you want to reveal to this person. It, and I, I'm getting like this, um, this message about, you know, uh, one step at a time. Um, I'll show me yours. If you, sh I'll show you mine. If you show me yours, um, thinking and communicating almost in a very, very methodical way and not wanting the other person to, I guess, like get, get the upper hand. So there is a, a big element here about, you know, not being able to trust or not being able to feel like you can trust somebody 100% where you don't want to reveal your cards and you're keeping things very, very much close to your chest, okay? Um, for those of you who are dealing with a water sign, Pisces, Cancer, or a Scorpio, I feel like this might be somebody that you are in a relationship with, okay? I have here the Prince of Cups. So this is water energy with the Ten of Cups. This is the family card, okay? The house, the, the it's like the cottage, the picket fence, the the two kids, the um, SUVs in the driveway. So what I feel is, for some of you, you might be in a relationship with this person, um, this water sign, and I I almost feel like you're trying to fix things. So if you have been having a lot of um, conflict, a lot of like, you know, ideological differences, a lot of like not being able to see eye to eye. And I feel almost like you're trying to appease this person. You're trying to find ways to dodge or navigate the energy around this person so that things don't descend into more conflict so that you can uh, restore the peace and the harmony and, and things like that, uh, with this person. I almost feel for some of you, there's almost a situation where it's like a, re a long-standing relationship that has been kind of like, you know, how you're, you've been with somebody for too long and, um, you're too comfortable with one another and the relationship has gone a little bit stale and you don't even know and you're questioning possibly the direction of the relationship. Are we still headed in the same direction? Are we still moving in the same direction? Are we still uh, wanting to stay together? And I, I see like you're doing some, some serious reassessment as to the viability of the relationship moving forward. Okay. Um, I'm also feeling as well, this is a person that requires a little bit more from you. They require you to open yourself up a little bit more emotionally to them. Uh, they're feeling possibly like they have been ten of wands. They feel like they're putting in a lot of um, time, resources, energy into this relationship and they want you to chip in more. They want you to you know, help them out. They feel a little bit emotionally either isolated or alone, or they're giving so much of themselves physically and emotionally, and they want you to kind of like step up and meet them halfway. And I just feel like at this point, you're assessing the situation and you're also wondering like, Am I able to give any more of myself? Do I still uh, want to be in this relationship or do I still want to be in this situation? And is it possible for me to step in? Um, so aside from that being a love a romantic partner, I feel like this is also somebody that you are sharing responsibilities with in the... Um, in the work sector okay so it could be a teammate it could be a colleague it could be somebody that you are starting up some type of project together and i feel like there has been a lot of stalled and delay plans because i'm feeling as well that there needs to be a little bit of a compromise between creative differences okay so there's a lot of work that needs to be done but if two people are not able to agree on a course of action on how to move things ahead, then I feel like it's really, really hard to get everything done because it, it's like, it, it's not a one man's job. Everyone needs to be on board. Everyone needs to contribute. Everyone needs to have like a common goal, a common purpose and a common vision in order to move things along. And I just feel like there's something here that is indicating, you know, there's a lot of compromise. There's a lot of like, 
delegating responsibility and relinquishing control that needs to happen, as well as trying your best to try to appease the other person, okay? So don't be too fixed in your own personal agenda. I feel like the time to compromise is now. The time to get things done and, you know, um, move things along and especially trust that the other person or the other people that you're dealing with know what they're doing and that they are competent and, and self-sufficient enough that you don't have to, you know, that, that you can trust that they will get there. Um, they will contribute and they will, you know, uh, get their f fair share of the work done. So learning to delegate, learning to contribute and learning especially to compromise as to the vision of the project that you're trying to bring into the fold. Um, there is as well, I feel like, um, I see people coming to you and they're asking you for things like they're not, not physical things. They're asking you, how would you do this? How would you solve this? How would you resolve this issue? Is it A or B? And I see you having to do a lot of like research, digging into a situation, unearthing some information, unearthing something a little bit further, possibly, um, reverting to or like perusing scholarly journals, large volumes of database. Um, I see you holding a lot of physical documents, okay, like paper documents, files, um, data even, data on the computer, numbers and data, and just large quantities of information that you kind of have to sift through in order to be able to come up with a resolution, in order to be able to understand the ins and outs as to how something works so that you can relay that information to the person that is asking you about this specific topic. So I feel like somebody is um, deferring to your judgment and I feel somebody is telling you and asking you as well, like, you know, um, they, they see you as someone who might be an expert in, in the field, whether or not that is true. I feel some of you, um, some of you might know a little bit about it. And, and so others might misinterpret and might defer to your judgment. And I feel like you might not know something. And so you're going to have to do a little bit more digging and a little bit more groundwork in order to provide them an accurate, uh, an accurate answer. And I feel like you're taking it upon yourself to do the digging, to do the research, to do the preliminary, you know, kind of like stockpiling up the information, compiling the data, getting all the information together, um, learning things from your end just so that you can feel confident that the answer that you give them is going to be the correct answer. So there's lots of people coming in and I feel like it is going to be quite, you know, a busy, um, as we round out the, the February timeframe, it's going to be a very, very busy time. Um, I see as well contemplation about travel and movement. Okay. Planning a trip, planning to come see somebody planning to communicate with somebody and then wanting to see like where are things going to go so it's like taking the first step to initiate contact or initiate conversation and then seeing where things are going to lead to and this is uh, page princess of swords page of swords in this deck and this is all about communication um as well as knight of wands trips and travel arrangements as well as wanting to connect with another person in a more physical way and when it's in the reverse it's almost like the conversation needs to happen first before the plans will come into the picture okay so there is another message that came out when i was shuffling and it's going to tie in with more of your love relationship sector i'm feeling so I see this man, he's, um, he's walking in a very, um, I, I want to say like, it, it's a desert type of an area and it looks almost like, you know, the, uh, the Grand Canyon region where the soil is very red and there are mountains and just really beautiful scenic landscape in the background. All of a sudden the ground starts shaking and the, the ground splits in half and he's standing like his two feet are like right on top where the land splits in half. And he has this um, split second to make a decision. Uh, do I lean completely over to the left or do I lean completely over to the right? And so 
as this is happening and the the land kind of you know splits off and, and kind of breaks open under him i see him moving to the right and when we look at these reading in terms of you know tarot readings the right always indicates the future the left is always you know usually um the past okay so the fact that he's jumping towards as the land splits up he's jumping towards the right indicates to me that you're at a point where you're willing to move ahead and you're willing to grab up new opportunities and the way that this is playing out i feel in your love relationship sector is uh you could potentially have two people that are you're choosing between the first one might be a water sign, a Pisces, a Cancer, or a Scorpio. And this is somebody that brings you a lot of stability. It's, it's very status quo. And the thing about earth signs and water signs is that um, they provide, they complement each other very well. And, you know, the, the earth sign provides that security and that, that physical security Whereas the water sign provides the emotional security. So together, earth and water signs in general blend and mesh really, really well. Okay. So I feel like that might be somebody that is uh, in the here and now or either in the past or you've had a, a lot of shared history with. And there's some major shakeup that's coming into the picture where you are trying to figure out is this connection still worthwhile? Is this is something that I should move forward with? And is this something that is still bringing me emotional happiness? And then on the other hand, we have a new person that you might have as well have known for a while too. So we have here the Page of Swords as well as the Queen of Swords. And both of these indicate this is somebody that you are still communicating very heavily with, okay? Air sign, air energy, Aquarius, Gemini, or Libra. This is someone, needless to say, air signs. They're very, very, very intelligent. They're witty, they're funny, they're crafty, they're very creative. Um, you can have like, you know, a multitude, um, like multiple conversations with this person. They are intellectually stimulating to be around. They're interesting to talk to. But the connection, it doesn't really get very, very deep. And that's the nature between the interaction between you, an earth sign, and an air sign. With you and the, the water sign, the, com the communication and the conversations and the topics can get very, very deep and can feel very emotionally embedded. Whereas with the air sign, conversations tend to be a little bit more on the superficial end. And until you learn to put your guard down, until you learn to, okay, let's not keep scores, let's not be petty, let's, um, let me be a little bit more open hearted and open armed when I am interacting with this person. Until you learn to do that, air signs don't really, um, open up until they feel secure and until they feel safe. So between you and the, uh, it, between the interaction between you and this air sign, I feel almost like there might have been some type of a stop go, stop go like uh, green light, red light, there might be a lot of things swirling in your environment, in their environment as well, that is hindering your ability to connect with each other. So for example, uh, you might catch each other at inopportune moments, okay? You're busy, they're busy. When uh, you're not busy, you come to them, they're busy. When they're not busy and they come to you, you're busy. So it seems like energetically, it's like, um, I see almost like, you know, two polar, uh, opposites, like magnets, the poles of the magnets where they kind of repel each other. And then I feel like there aren't enough, uh, ideological differences either. So when the two of you talk, you dwell a little bit too much on the differences. And because of that, the communication, um, it, it's a little bit kind of like blocked. And as a result of it, you can't really have these deep-rooted emotional conversations with one another. And then I also feel like because of that, you're kind of torn between two things. Which one should I, you know, jump towards? Okay. So when 
I, I feel like this reading is all about boiling down to the fundamentals, okay? Boiling down to like the essence of things. When we strip away all the exterior obstacles, when we strip away all the facade, we're left with just two individuals. And I feel like, you know, you, you're, you're kind of thinking about and thinking long and hard too, because I feel like you're really, really weighing out and measuring these decisions very, very carefully. On the one hand, you're clinging onto something that is very familiar, but once again, the ground is shaking from under you. It's almost like that, that carpet, that rug being pulled out from under you very, very slowly. And it's like some, you're resisting, you're resisting the pull. And if you ever play, you know, tug of war, even with, um, with a dog or with another person, it's sort of like you have to kind of gently pull and ease your way out. And I feel like that's what's happening. It's like you're hanging on so tightly that the other person or, you know, the universe even has to kind of like readjust the rug and then kind of like gently um, pivot it in order to move it away from you. And then when that happens, it's just a matter of, you know, which direction are you going to go? And what I'm seeing here is I'm seeing many of you are doing, this is the magician. I'm seeing many of you are doing research into a specific thing and you're keeping things very, very under wraps, very hush hush. And um, what I saw when I saw this card is I am thinking about like somebody who could potentially be thinking about um, separation, about divorce, about like child custody, studying up on the rules and regulations and laws about like, okay, if I were to divorce, how much is my, um, the person I'm with going to get? How much I'm, do I have to pay in, um, alimony? How much do I have to pay in, uh, child support? Or likewise, if I were to get a divorce, how much does the other person need to pay me every month? So I'm seeing something being done like very under the radar with this card as it relates to joint finances and assets and how to extract it so that we don't lose a lot of um, our financial base. Okay. And we have as well the Hierophant and the Hierophant with the Magician. I feel like there is a very karmic type of an energy here and I feel like it's definitely split up the magician is very much about you know experimentation trying something new not sticking to social expectations family expectations the social order doing something that is a little bit more like avant-garde doing something that is um, a little bit more trailblazing and let's be honest you guys are not you know, risk takers, but I feel like there's a situation here where you just feel like it's not bringing you emotional happiness anymore. And you're trying to remove yourself from it. But in the meantime, before you decide and to physically remove yourself from it, you're studying up on the laws, you're studying up on, you know, where can I go after this? What should I be doing? And what is the best optimal way for me to do this so I can have like the best out optimal outcome? And then I also feel on this, with this Hierophant, it's almost like, do I want to, you know, do something completely different, like deviate from the crowd or do I want to follow the herd? And I feel many of you have been following the herd for a little bit too long. And now you're at a point where you're strategically thinking as well, you know, what's the next step for me? What can I do to invite a little bit more fun spontaneity as well as living my life more so for me rather than appeasing other people. And this is an energy that I felt uh, have been coming in for you guys for a while. With this Hierophant energy, this is your card. And it usually denotes to me, you know, I see this little lamb here, sacrifices, okay? Making personal sacrifices in order to follow tradition, in order to play it safe, in order to do things that are socially or even, you know, just culturally or that, that family, friends, loved ones, society expects of us. And in the meantime, this little lamb, we are kind of like sacrificing 
our wants and our needs because we feel like it is too selfish of us to behave in a way where we do things only for ourselves. So I feel like you're grappling with this major dilemma. And that could be the two sides of the equation. Like, you know, as the ground splits up from under him, where is he going to go? Is he going to uh, go back to the status quo? Or is he going to try to trailblaze and, and do something new and do something that would be emotionally exhilarating for him without having the guilt associated with making decisions for myself, living for myself. And so I feel like you're grappling with that decision, that, that sense of like, is it selfish of me to do things that make me feel good? Because this whole time I've been doing things that is expected of me. And now I have an opportunity, I have a chance to kind of like do something brand new and different and drastic are other people going to tell me that I'm being uh, impulsive or selfish or foolish, okay? And so you're, you're still mulling this situation through. And I feel like you're going to be getting a nudge, getting communication from someone that is very exhilarating. Not only are they kind of like free-spirited and freedom-loving, but I also feel like they're not reckless and there is an element here about you kind of like admiring them, looking up to them and feeling like they have the life that you want or they have the energy that you want to be associated with. So I feel like the, 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 um, I guess like the, I guess like the spiritual advice is that there is going to be a message coming through uh, in another through another person. So while you're grappling with this decision, somebody's going to come in and, you know, they're going to tell you they're going to like unexpectedly be a messenger and they're going to tell you what you should do. So, for example, for example, 